Okay, in the previous tutorial, we made this little application here uh, using jQuery Mobile. Uh, obviously, you can throw this up on a website or put the files locally, open them up in a web browser on pretty much any computer or device, regardless of operating system, as long as they have a modern browser. So Android, iPhone, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, uh, BSD, uh, probably even React OS. Um, so basically, it's just this list that we can search through real quick. Very basic little web application. Now we're going to package it as a standalone application so that if you didn't want to run it on your server you could package it all in a package and and distribute it on different operating systems we're going to be using python with gtk and webkit today so basically this will run on any desktop windows mac linux bsd so on and so forth uh, because Python being open source, GTK being open source, and WebKit being open source, they have been compiled for all these different operating systems. Um, so basically, once you basically wrap your HTML and JavaScript inside your WebKit in Python, uh, you're good to go. Uh, you just have to make sure that each uh, your, you make an installer that will uh, install the required packages. Um, Linux, this is easy. You know, you can make a deb package, RPM package, or you can make a standalone little self-extracting zip. Uh, so, you know, Windows is a little bit harder because it doesn't have a package manager that will install uh, dependencies for you. So you definitely would have to uh, create and install any of the downloads and gets those things and, or package them into your entire package. But basically right now I'm just going to show you the basic Python, GTK, uh, WebKit uh, code. It's very short. You do this and now you have written a standalone application with your HTML, JavaScript, jQuery uh, as a desktop application. Hope that makes sense. If not, you'll see here in a moment. So as I always say, you write a program once you write it once properly, uh, with very little to no change, it should run on pretty much all operating systems. And HTML is great for GUI interfaces uh, because pretty much every computer already has uh, a, an interpreter, your web browser installed. So let's go ahead, minimize that. So list out, remember if you watched the previous tutorial, if you haven't, I would definitely start at the beginning of this series. There should be an annotation on the screen, hopefully that will lead you to the playlist. Uh, at the end of the last tutorial, we downloaded our CSS files and JavaScript files locally. Once again, you can connect to those online if your application is going to have uh, web access. But if not, package them in here, just put them into your file here. And we can even at this point remove our, our zip file here because uh, we don't need to distribute that because it's all extracted already. So I'll remove that. And uh, now I'm just going to say, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor and I'm going to create a package or a, a script. I'll call it mylistview.py. Uh, uh, and we are going to start, as always, uh, with our shebang line. Uh, so this isn't important on Windows, but it's a little more important on other operating systems, just letting our operating system know what interpreter to use. So we're going to say pound exclamation mark forward slash uh, USR bin and then ENV for environment. We're going to say Python. That's just telling the operating system this is a Python script. Next we're going to import WebKit and GTK. We're actually going to import something else here in a minute depending on how we're going to package this. You may or may not need the other module. Uh, next we're just going to create a window object. So we're going to say, I'll call it win. Once again, that's your object name. You can call that pretty much whatever you want. But we're going to call our GTK module, which we imported up here. And we're going to say this win object is going to be a window. So it's a GTK window. Um, next, we'll say win.connect. And we'll say here, we'll give it the string destroy. Uh, this basically is going to, when you click the little X on the window, will kill our application. Otherwise, the window will close, but our script will keep running. And since we're only running a one window script here, we want it to kill the script when we close the window. So uh, Lambada, uh, W colon, and then GTK dot main underscore quit. And that's because we're going to run the GTK main 
uh, at the end of this script, and this is just saying to kill it. So in fact, let's just go ahead and do that, gtk.main, and that's starting all up. Nothing is visible yet, though. So at this point, let's create our WebKit window. We'll create a web object, WebKit, and uh, definitely watch my GTK tutorial series. I go more into detail on all this. I'm trying to explain it as I go, but I've already gone over this in previous tutorials, so we'll be going through it pretty quick. But we're creating an object. We're going to call the object web. We're going to call our WebKit module, which we imported up here, and we're calling from it. We're going to say, let's make a web view. This is going to be our viewer for our HTML code. Now at this point, I'm just going to give you an example. I'm going to say web.open and then inside here, I'm just going to say HTTP, oops, TTP colon forward slash forward slash filmsbychris.com to show you, you can host all these files on your website. Um, and in many cases, I think that's a better option because now you can modify and update your program anytime you want. And the user doesn't have to worry about their phone or, or desktop application in this case updating because you make the changes on your website. Next time they open up the application, it's got the updates. So I'm going to show you this, but then I'm going to show you how to run the local program that you would package with this script. So open that, and then we're going to say win.add, and we're going to say uh, our web object, and then we're going to say win.show underscore all. And that was just saying, show the window and everything inside the window because we don't have any hidden elements in this script, so it's okay to do that. If I didn't miss anything, we should get a basic window right now. So I will save that. I will use change mod plus X, uh, my list view, the name of our script, uh, to make it executable. And I'm going to say my list view for dot slash my list view dot py. And when I hit enter, you can see we get this window here. And it's resizing because it loaded up my website. And it's kind of kind of funky size now because we didn't give it any size parameters. But this is my website running inside uh, our Python script here. And a little JavaScript of me walking across the screen there. Uh, so you'll also notice, uh, we'll get to this in a second, that it goes off the bottom of the screen. We didn't give it a window size and we didn't give it a scroll bar. So those are things we're going to add here in a moment. But first, let's, instead of running the application on the website, we will run it locally. So I will close that. You notice I hit the X, it kills the entire application because we did our Lombada on the destroy of the window. I'll go back into my text editor here and we'll uh, change some things up. First off, let's um, go ahead and give it a scroll bar. Uh, actually, no, let's give it a window size first. So by default, if you don't give it a window size, the window is going to be kind of small and long depending on your application, but it's going to be like the minimum size in some cases, very, very small. So let's give it a default size. We'll say our, our window object, our win object, we'll say resize, and we'll give it a size. I'll just say 600 comma 800. Uh, there's other options you can do to lock it in at that size if you don't want your application to change sizes. This particular application, I don't care. I just want to have a default size at the beginning here. Uh, also, as I said, uh, it's a long application, so it like resized right away to fit the length of our HTML, which if we have a long list, as we do in this program, will run off the bottom of the screen and people can't scroll because there's no scroll bar. So here we'll say, scroller, which is just an object we're creating. We're going to call it scroller. You can call it whatever you want within reason. Uh, and then we're going to call our GTK module and say, we're going to make a scrolled window object. Okay. Uh, now we're going to say win.add. So we're taking our window object and we're adding to it our scroller object that we just created. Okay. But a window is a container that can only contain one object at a time. You need to put other containers within it, which the scroller object is. So down here we say win.add web. It's going to give you an error there because the window is already containing an object. So instead of adding our web object to the window, we're going to add it to our scroller. Okay? Uh, now, also here, as you saw, we're connecting to a host file online. Uh, which is something you can do if you want to run your application off your server, which depending on what you're doing, once again, 
uh, may or may not be what you want to do. So instead of that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say uh, uh, file dot colon forward slash forward slash forward slash. My particular HTML code in here is under forward slash temp forward slash list forward slash index dot HTML. So now if we save all this and if I typed everything right, already made the script executable. We don't have to do that again. Dot slash name of our script. And here we go. We got our application running locally. I can scroll and I can search through the list. And if I had them do anything, I could click on them. So, so far, that's what we've got. But you'll notice I had to put in a definite link to where the HTML file is. Um, let's do a little bit better and instead let's um, go ahead and uh, tell it that we want to run the index from our local directory, our current directory. So to do that, we're going to import another module, the OS module, which is the operating system module. And I am going to put here, whoops, I'm going to say, I'm going to create a little holder variable. I'm going to say path equals from our OS module dot get CWD, which will get our current working directory and put it into the path. So basically path is a string variable now. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that it's a file, a local file. Then I'm going to say use the path variable we just created. And inside that path, look for the index.html. We're going to save that. We're going to run that. And you can see that's the same thing. So now, regardless of what folder uh, we install our application to, it will always find that HTML file. Uh, so as long as they're all in the folder together, it will always find it. And you can install it anywhere on your system that you want. Uh, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. And once again, this is written in Python. So once you've created this wrapper, this short little script, which is, as I said, pretty short. It's even with all the spaces in there, 22 lines. This is probably actually maybe 10 to 15 lines of code. Uh, once you have that set up, uh, you can now install this and have it run on Windows, Mac, or Linux because Python and GTK and WebKit run on all those operating systems already. I thank you for this tutorial. I hope you continue this series. Next, we're going to do the same thing, uh, but with C++, and we'll probably do it with Qt and WebKit rather than GTK and WebKit. So I hope you continue watching this series in packaging web applications as standalone applications on multiple devices and computers. Uh, so please visit my site, filmsbychris.com. There should be a link in the description. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.